So I want to reiterate why the separation of Australia from Antarctica is really important and how this actually completely changed our global climate. So let's say here we are in the Oligocene, the early Oligocene, or even before that. And again, my drawing is horrible, so just go with me. So let's say here we have Antarctica and here we have Australia. They are connected. On our planet, we have two types of waters. We have cold water and warm water. Cold water is very dense. It is heavy. Because it's heavy, it tends to stay at the poles. Warm water is much lighter. So it can move, but right, it usually stays near the equator. Now, we have what are called circumpolar currents, which means that cold water just kind of stays around the pole. So let's say here we have our cold water down here in the southern hemisphere. It's got to go, right, our cold water here has to go in between South America and, Aust and at Antarctica. It goes around. But you see how it has to come back up around Australia before it can come back down again? Because it's coming up, this water gets warmed. So it's bringing warm water down to the poles. So what we see is that circumpolar current doesn't get very cold. Now, let's take a look at what happens after these continents split. So we have our circumpolar currents. Right? So here we have Australia, there we have Antarctica, there's South America. So our circumpolar currents now are just going around Antarctica. They are not going anywhere near the equator. They are not getting warmed up. Because this cold water is just staying around here, it stays cold. It never gets a chance to warm up. Because that water is just staying around the pole, that's what causes Antarctica to freeze over. And because we now see the introduction of this cold water, what's really important is the Earth now goes into greenhouse conditions. We go from this nice greenhouse that we've seen into ice house. So what we've seen is nice warm weather, right, all the way from Snowball Earth all the way up into the Oligocene. And we know it's been warm because we've seen North America covered with an ocean way. That's our greenhouse conditions. Now, from the end of the Oligocene to today, we are in ice house conditions. And we're in those ice house conditions because of these circumpolar currents. Now, I just want to talk very briefly because we do have to recognize eventually Antarctica is going to move off the pole. And when that happens, right, we're going to get another transgression. And the Earth is going to go back into these greenhouse conditions. But that's not going to happen. We're not going to see something like that happen for a very long time, several millions of years.